just because you set out on your own as an entrepreneur doesn't mean that you are alone. I think for me, you know, setting out on my own, I really kind of had that mindset of I'm paving my own way and I'm figuring things out on my own and I'm doing it my way. And man, I ran into every roadblock and snag and painful lesson that there was to find with that mindset. So Welcome to the Get Business Savvy Podcast. I'm George Black and this is AJ Bishop. So we'd like to welcome Garrett Takash to the Get Business Savvy Podcast today. We're super excited he's here. He is a serial entrepreneur, been doing, I think, entrepreneurism like 10 years or something. He started and owned the Ninja Park Obstacle Fitness Gym. And then today he's now the owner of YouTubeIncomeBuilder.com. So welcome, Garrett. Yeah, thank you, George. AJ, I'm really excited to be here with you guys. Yeah, thanks for coming on, Garrett. I'm really looking forward to hearing what you have to say and hearing your 10-year journey so far. Yeah, absolutely. So, Garrett, tell us, like, what caused you to be an entrepreneur in the first place? Well, the story starts when I was 17, and I read your book, George, uh, The Next Level Entrepreneur, and it wasn't even called that yet at the time. <laughs> it was an early edition of the book, and I came across the line where – the line in the book that says, I would rather pursue my own vision than work to be a part of someone else's. And I don't think anything has ever connected so deeply with me. Wow. And I already had this, this idea and this vision of doing Ninja Park. I, I didn't even have a name for it. It was just, it was this gym, this fitness facility that would just take the chore like feel out of fitness and gamify things and incorporate fitness with American Ninja Warrior style obstacles. But it was when I read that line in that book that that just fully launched me into entrepreneurialism. That's that's really cool. So a little backstory, guys. I didn't know Garrett and wouldn't meet him for several years after all of that. But what happened was his cousin who wrote the forward of the book um, had given Garrett, unbeknownst to me, without my permission, <laughs> an advanced copy of the book it was an early draft quite frankly it wasn't even a copy of the book it was an early draft because Stephen was so excited about the book and uh chomping at the bit to use it and i'm like oh, let me finish it yeah and then once you illegally acquired the book garrett how did you uh <laughs> how did that inspire you to uh get into uh, a ninja park american ninja warrior how did was there a passion for that or there 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 definitely was a passion for it i mean when i look back to my childhood i, I was jumping off roofs onto the trampoline and climbing up trees and making obstacle courses out of absolutely anything that i that i could dream up so so there was a passion for it absolutely i i was into fitness and i was a personal trainer at the time but you know being a personal trainer at kind of a i guess a conventional kind of gym i noticed that you know, fitness was something that was very hard for a lot of people. It was very chore like. And any time that I could gamify something or add a challenge or something to to it, it helped them a lot. And and my clients were achieving their goals, they were sticking with it. And I personally just loved American Ninja Warrior, those kinds of obstacles. And that's what gamified fitness for me. And that's where my passion was. So I wanted to do a gym where really anyone of any fitness level could have a starting point and be able to just gamify their health and fitness and form habits because they stick with it because it's fun and not chore like and, and live a, a happy, healthy life. So how old were you at this when you started the business? When I started really pressing into like, I'm going to do this, I was 17. And I was reading the illegally acquired version. <laughs> like it wasn't even a book. Like it was, it was, it was printed off of a printer and stapled. And oh, so you printed <laughs> my book? <laughs> I'd given him a PDF. Yeah, yeah. So, so I was seventeen. I was reading that and just, just being, being inspired. And you know, and and yeah, I was, I was seventeen. I, I had no idea <laughs> what what I was doing other than I had this idea, I think it would work, I think it would be really cool, I, ha I had a vision for it, 
I didn't even know that I had a vision for anything until I was reading <laughs> your material, George, that, that this is a vision. And from the time you started reading the book and being inspired by it, how did you go from that to actually starting your business? Well, the thing that is awesome about the book is there's a strategic process called the next level navigator in the book. So, so not only was I reading and taking all this in and beginning to get some business savvy, you know, to actually go and do this, but I was creating my own next level navigator. So I was going through all the guidance. I was, I was going through everything and I came away with my next level navigator, which was, you know, my, my vision for it, my guiding principles, my next level and how I was going to get there. And that was just amazingly clarifying because to go from this idea that's just in my head. And I mean, you guys should have seen me try to explain this to people you know, like, before I, before I had this next little navigator, it was like, I didn't even know what I was talking about. And, and they were like, yeah, man, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't think you should do like, I don't even know what you're talking about. And, you know, maybe, maybe just stay with your job at the conventional gym. <laughs> but, but seriously. And then, when I had conversations with the same people after the clarity that I had from having the next level navigator, it was, it was totally different. They were like, man, yeah, that's awesome. Like, can I be a part of that with you? <laughs> it was, it was really amazing. That's really cool. Talk about the early, the, the first year or two. I had a lot of help, but we, we can build all of these obstacles because at the time, you know, there's, there's no one, there's nowhere we can go and like order this kind of gym equipment right. or obstacles or anything. So this was, I mean, I, I had never done anything like that before. So before I could even get into what I really wanted to do, like I was in a machine shop, you know, building, figuring out how to build these obstacles and work with wood and metal and all these different materials and all that kind of stuff. So that was a big part of kind of the pre-launch was getting all that stuff ready to go. So are these obstacles like, I mean, was American Ninja Warrior going on at the time? Were these obstacles like what you'd see on the TV show? Yeah. So I, I was watching American Ninja Warrior and I was like, I've just got to do that. I've got to get on this, this competition somehow and do that. So I was a huge fan of American Ninja Warrior. So these were, obstacles from American Ninja Warrior. And that's that's how I was training. That's what I, and I was moving toward being a competitor on the show while all this was going on. And so you you have this idea for American Ninja Warrior. You love it. You're building the obstacles and everything. But I think there's one big point that we're missing with building a business at such a young age, funding. How did you get even started with that? So I was fortunate. I mean, I had some support from, from family and friends and everything, but there was this, this competition that was put on by Sam's club and it, it was this national business championship competition. They picked 400 and some businesses to compete in it. And, and we were one of them that got selected to compete. So I was doing this competition. It went from February to October. So it was this like multi-stage pitching kind of competition. Sounds very but, similar to the competition I've done. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So they wanted to see, you know, there were stages to this thing. And at one point I had won like a $500 gift card to Sam's Club or something. And, and it was literally like, what can I do with $500? And what's my... ROI on the $500 that I got from Sam's Club. How did I incorporate that into my business? And what, how creative can I be with that? The competition kept progressing through the year with stuff like that. And finally, we were selected, Ninja Park was selected as a top three contender for the $25,000 grand prize of this whole thing. So I flew to Washington, DC, where we did this final pitch in this like grand, like, like gala dinner hall. It was amazing in Washington, D.C. and did that last pitch and judges got together and decided that Ninja Park won. So we won the $25,000, which was huge for funding because this was about, this was a, just going into the second year of business. We kind of had the first year underway. We had the pre-launch. 
all done the first year. This was going into the second year. So that 25,000 really helped with kind of with funding in those early years to kind of really get the ball rolling on this thing. So, so wait a minute, you beat 399 other companies. How on earth did you do that? The thing that set me apart is every time I look back on this, I, I, I know this for sure was that I had the next level navigator. Really? When, when they would ask me questions, and things you know i would i would be able to speak from vision i would be able to speak from next levels strategies and tactics but something that they would do i and, and i noticed this that something they would do is the judges would try to poke holes in that kind of stuff they would bring up barriers and potential barriers but part of the next level navigator was i had already thought through potential barriers and i had a list of strategies underneath every single barrier that as soon as a, a judge or somebody brought up, oh, well, what about this? You know, what would you do when this happened? Or, or you know, whatever it was, I just fired right back from the next level navigator with strategy and tactic and overcoming and direction and clarity all leading in, into the vision. I know exactly what you're talking about with the, the judges answering, asking you questions and trying to poke holes in it. And it is a huge benefit when you've already thought of those questions in advance. I wish I was more connected with the next level navigator because I feel like I answered the questions good, but I could have tied them better to my vision and uh, made it an even more compelling answer uh, to just take it over the top. And it's pretty incredible when you can connect all of those things like you were able to do just from reading a early unpolished transcript of the book. Did you win this competition before you met George? This was before I met George. Oh, wow. So I, so I had his book. I had the process and everything i had made my next level navigator was a couple years into business but i hadn't ever really officially met george and that that was really fun because after i had won the competition and i had won the competition because of the next level navigator in george's book you know george flew out to albuquerque where ninja park is and came and checked out the gym and that was that was absolutely amazing for me. I was like, I was like starstruck meeting the author <laughs> of this of this book that inspired me so much and just connected with me so much and really, like I said, just launched me into entrepreneurialism to do this to do this venture and to do Ninja Park and live into that vision. But man, you guys, you guys should have seen when so George comes to the gym and checks it out, and I kind of give him a tour and everything. And we head up to this little office space that I had, and I. I had this glass desk up there in the office. So my next level navigator, I slid it underneath the glass desk. So like I was always looking at the next level navigator like every day. So I pull it out and I give it to him and I'm like shaking like, <laughs> because, because I'm, like, I'm, I'm handing my, my next level navigator to the creator of the next level navigator and the author of the book. And, and he's going to look at it and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like freaking out. So, so I give it to him. He checks it out. And, 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 and George, you know, of course, he was very kind and supportive. Well, and wait a minute. I got to add something to this. <laughs> I'm in this little office and behind me on the wall is one of those gigantic checks that says $25,000. <laughs> and that's how he won the thing. So I'm like, how, how, do you, how can you be critical <laughs> you won $25,000? <laughs> This has got to be, that's pretty good approval. I don't know, but I'm not sure I can add anything to this. <laughs> no, that, yeah, that's, that's right. But that's really, that was the first time I, I met George in person, like really officially, officially met him. And that, that was amazing because that really launched the relationship that, that George and I have now. Yeah. What was interesting about interacting with Garrett over the next few years was he actually knew my book better than I did. <laughs> and I was like, really? That's in the, you know, I'd go back and, oh my gosh, that's really in the book. Um, but one of the things that you kept doing, Garrett, was evolving the, the navigator each year as you made some pivots and things like that. Talk about how you used it to lead your team and lead your company. So the next level navigator for me was just a key piece in being able to, to like like you said, George, to lead the company, lead the team. Um, for me, something that I found really helpful 
was in the onboarding process of a new employee or a new trainer, um, we would we would get out the next level navigator and and just talk from vision and let them contribute to it. Let let them you know share their thoughts on the vision and the role that they think that they can play and that they would like to play within that and how they and how they fit into it. And and that just becoming part of that on like an, an early part of the onboarding process was so amazing for me because one it actually ruled out a lot of people that I wouldn't have known to rule out and but but they wouldn't have fit into the into the old to the vision oh no wait a minute. How, how did that work yeah it was it was very just conversational you know so I would just kind of speak about the vision the ultimate vision the ultimate impact that we want to make as a company and the next level kind of where we're headed um next step strategies i would just speak from all of that and kind of let them chime in on their thoughts on it mm -hmm. and where they feel like like they could fit into it and the kind of role that, that they could play that would really you know be an asset to the whole to the team and the company overall and all of us joining together and together moving the needle toward where we want to go and overcome these barriers to realize this next level that we collectively want to get to this is fascinating and guys you can tell i mean we've worked together i've never heard that and here's what's interesting about it because i've i've obviously led teams and companies and all that using the navigator one of the things i've discovered about this tool is it exposes team members who are strong and who are weak yeah. I, I don't really talk about this much but this is absolutely fascinating. It's not, and it's like you said, it's just more in the conversation of things. It's not like intentional and it's not a humiliating thing or anything like that, but you just realize that guy doesn't have what I thought he had. And that gal does right a whole yeah. lot more than I thought. Exactly. And George, when you're saying strong and weak there, are you referring to it in terms of like buy-in towards the mission? Or, or towards that ultimate vision? Or how do you think it actually like exposes whether that person would be a good employee for you in, achieve, in achieving your next levels? Yeah, I would talk about it in terms of team members. So that's going to be a strong team member or a weak team member. And by that, I mean, the strong person is someone I can really count on, lean on, depend on. The weak one, eh, they may not last a big part of that has to be the buy-in towards the vision. If you're talking about a vision and they're like, what are you talking about? I don't really, sure, we could do that, but I'm just here to get a paycheck and train some people or whatever you were hiring for in that case, Garrett. Yeah. I could see how that buy-in to the vision and the commitment to that would reveal how strong they are and how reliable they will be. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, as you say that, AJ, I'm just remembering that what it, what it did also was it really did expose the people who are just looking for a job and a paycheck and sometimes that that's okay you know like there there were some positions where you know that that was okay but ultimately you know i was really trying to build a team where everybody no matter what role they were playing whether they were the front desk staff or a top trainer you know everybody was was contributing their strengths to overcoming the barriers to achieving the next level because everybody was bought in so deeply to the overall vision and mission that we were all there for and to contribute to the overall impact that we wanted to make as a business. Honestly, this is not a planned conversation at all, but I think I'm getting what I'm trying, what I've experienced for years. I've never really focused on much. I've just kind of like acknowledged and kind of move on. And I'll and like, you know, as I'm talking to like senior, senior leadership, I would say things like, you know, you know, Bob over there, I'm not so sure he's going to, you know, that's pretty weak strategy stuff. And I would see it in the development of strategies, quite frankly, that's where I saw it. It's just like what we saw, we were talking about a couple of weeks ago, the boys in the boat. So go listen to that podcast because it's, it's all these guys in the boat and you need everyone in the boat pulling with the same strength. You can't have one person not pulling the oar in sync and with the same power as everybody else. It just won't work, particularly if that's like, I don't mean everybody in your company necessarily, but I definitely mean everybody on your key leadership team. 
which may be two or three people. It may be, and um, you know, in the case of a large company, it could be a dozen, but you need them all pulling in the same direction at the same rate, at the same strength. And it, this process will expose, well, hey, you know, I'm not sure that guy can handle the ore real well. That is absolutely true. The other thing it did, which made my life so much easier, was it actually, even in an earned, like an early interview or onboarding process, it actually exposed them because I had some guys that I was just looking at, at from the outside in, I was like, this guy sounds awesome. And then from talking through the navigator with them and just having a conversation around all those things, you know, they decided that it wasn't for them. It wasn't gonna be the right fit for them. And wow. looking back on that, I'm like, that saved me so much pain and stress and time and money. <laughs> I've worked at a gym at one point and the gym I worked at was a big one, large old investors, um, but it was very disjointed, no vision statements whatsoever. Each, like it, they ran it much like a corporation where there's a party division and the basketball division and all these yeah. divisions and nothing really worked cohesively. Um, and then ultimately that business failed and I needed to find a new job. But uh, I, it's, I can tell how it's important in that industry because it's not an easy industry to operate in getting everybody on the same page. Also, when you have buy-in from the team, it's gonna create more buy-in from the customers. And you're asking people at a gym to come in and do something hard every day, basically. And so having a team that can bring energy and make the customers wanna be part of that vision as well to keep coming back to do something hard, um, that's ultimately why I think you probably had a successful business. With the, that industry being so difficult, we are on the tail end of a, a fairly large, event in our uh, world that impacted your industry very significantly where everybody had to go home and a lot of gyms were shut down. How did you navigate through that? And um, did your next level navigator help you with that? Yeah, you know, that that was a really hard time because in my state, government said that I just couldn't operate. I had to shut down. That was a piece that wasn't, I really hadn't planned for, um, I mean, no one did. <laughs> yeah. A, a lot of businesses, you know, went online and kind of uh, adapted that way. And and I did do that. I did do that. But the thing with with this gym, with, with Ninja Park, was all of the customized obstacles and specialty equipment were there. And I couldn't take that online. And and we did do online programming. Um, we continue to service members with online programming and we got we just it was a time where we had just unleash creativity and that i mean because of the navigator that everyone on the team you know that's 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 just who we were you know we were a very creative um company where john would borrow from the book george where you know if someone asked us um how we think outside the box we said what box <laughs> <laughs> You guys will have to just have to read the book to, to get that, yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but do that because <laughs> that will change how you go forward for the rest of your life in a very, very positive way. It did come down to though, it wasn't part of our vision to develop home workouts for people necessarily. You know, we just weren't that kind of, of gym. I mean, that that's we, we were an obstacle fitness gym. And unless we could help people build obstacles at home, which we couldn't, you know, we couldn't really continue to do the kind of training that we were really truly passionate about. There were a lot of there were a lot of barriers at that time too. You know, rent didn't stop because I got shut down. You know, and expenses didn't stop. My my landlord was trying to take the rent up. You know. <laughs> And, and I was like, I, I can't even operate. I, I can't even run the business right now. I can't, I can't do that. So when we started, there was another couple guys who actually started an obstacle fitness league from Ninja Park. At this point in 2020, the league was an international you know, thing that was going on and had gained a ton of momentum in 2020, sold it to that obstacle league so Ninja Park became kind of the world headquarters to this international competition. Oh, wow. And you mentioned in that, that your business, that you didn't get into it to be an online business and that's just not 
who you were. Right. As you were getting into the online space and really discovering that and that the reality that we were all being locked up in our houses, were you feeling alone in that? And how did you kind of combat that as an entrepreneur who was building a fitness community to being yeah. alone in your house? Yeah, I I absolutely felt alone in in that in that time. Yeah, that that was a time. You know, I really started to understand the difference between being alone and being lonely because I was, I was, I was lonely at, like you mentioned, AJ, my, my whole thing was building community that brought people together and, you know, building this really positive space where, where people are, are bettering their lives and living more fully into health and wellness and, and having fun while doing it. I mean, that was the whole thing. And that got just ripped away. So I was plugged in, I was plugged in with George. I was plugged in with, with the live truly free, community what's built around George you know I just um yeah without that I I would have been not not talking with you guys I, I wouldn't have gotten past that that first year definitely not the second year sheesh um George was someone who had really come alongside me you know helped me just become more of, of the man and the entrepreneur that I am and that that was really huge for me so you know, like I said, fortunately, by that time, I had already, you know, really plugged in with George, had a relationship there, and um, just just had had guidance from him, you know. So George's heart is for entrepreneurs, man. Like it's like nothing I've I've ever seen in anybody truly. You know, it, he is for entrepreneurs. He he cares for entrepreneurs, and he understands entrepreneurs, and. I've, I've just got to say about George just real quick. The thing that I love about about you, George, is, you know, you're not just someone who went and interviewed successful people and took notes mm -hmm. or, you know, you're not you're not just someone who went and, you know, read a bunch of stuff and compiled a bunch of stuff and now is going to come into my business and, and teach me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> while I'm in this live fire situation, um, you know, you, you, you've been there, you've been in the trenches, you've been in the live fire situations, you've been an entrepreneur, you've been in so many different companies in that entrepreneurial role, you're an entrepreneur yourself. So, so that, that, that just, that really, you know, just has always, has always connected with me and, I, and I've just, you know, always been able to receive your guidance because I know you've been there and I know your heart. Yeah, I think, Garrett, what you're saying is super relatable, certainly across the spectrum of entrepreneurs that I've encountered and even myself. Just you feel all alone. And one of the things we're doing here at Live Truly Free, as you know, I mean, you had my book, an early version. But um, and and so even just having that book or having a, a book on entrepreneurism is you're not all alone anymore. Okay, guys. So just keep that in mind. Listening to this podcast, you're not all alone. So there's ways to connect. We want to add, and the podcast is free. And to keep it free, we would love for you to subscribe and uh, like and comment and do all that kind of good stuff. But we're going to offer something else. And I wanted to, to save it and announce it today. We want to do a monthly webinar at the end of the month, and it's going to be free. And it's for entrepreneurs in this entrepreneurial community to gather. And it's it's really a coaching kind of webinar thing. So we're super excited to offer this. So there's a link in the description. You can sign up for that. Um, also, let me talk about the Next Level Navigator e-course because we've got it at a big discount right now. And I'm going to keep that going for a little bit. Absolutely, you should do that based on everything Garrett's saying. And it, it takes you through so much. So check those check those things out, all in links below in the description. So Garrett, how do people get in touch with you now? I was just, I honestly, I truly, I was inspired by you, George, and, and how you help entrepreneurs. And I wanted to be a part of that too. And I started a company where I do video editing. It, it, was, it, was, it was in a different way. And I, I found you know, passion for story and telling story and, and emotion and just coming alongside content creators and getting helping them get out there and their story out there. And it started with video editing, but it's really developed now to 
well, it's just what the company is called, YouTube Income Builder. And so building up their channel, building up audience on their channel, and but also, you know, building up the overall brand and, and kind of fueling their overall business with the growing audience from the YouTube channel and coming alongside them in all of those aspects along the way of making that happen. So YouTubeIncomeBuilder.com is the place to go to see more about me and get in touch with me. Awesome. Yeah, and we'll have a link below as well. So guys, check out these two videos from the last two weeks. I know you're going to love them. And until next time, may you live truly free.